there. How are you today? Today I'm going to discuss Stephen Krashen. Stephen Krashen is an American linguist, educational researcher, and professor emeritus of the University of Southern California, otherwise known as USC. He has published more than 350 papers and books contributing to the fields of second language acquisition, bilingual education, and reading. One of Krashen's most famous works, and perhaps one of the most controversial, are his five hypotheses about second language acquisition. The fourth of these hypotheses, the input hypothesis, is the topic of this brief informative video. Krashen's input hypothesis contains four basic parts. Number one, the learner must be focused on meaning, in other words, comprehension of the input, not on the form or the grammatical structure of the input. Number two, in order for the learner to move to a higher stage or to advance, the input must not only be understood by the learner, but it must also contain some structures that the learner is not familiar with. This concept is called I, or input, plus one. Number three, it is not necessarily to deliberately program more difficult input, in other words, the plus one. If the input provided is of quality and is sufficient, then the plus one will come automatically. Number four, speaking cannot be taught directly. Speaking is a skill that emerges and becomes more accurate over time if sufficient comprehensible input is provided. Krashen cites evidence to support his input hypothesis from three different areas. Number one, how children acquire their first language. Number two, how people acquire a second language, and number three, research in applied linguistics. In observing how children acquire their first language, Krashen notes that adults naturally use what he calls caretaker speech with children, which is a more basic speech that is roughly tuned to their level of development and understanding in that moment. With caretaker speech, children are neither directly taught to speak, nor are they taught the grammatical rules of the language. Yet, over time, they learn to communicate fluently and accurately in their native language. Therefore, Krashen asserts his input hypothesis is valid. In other words, Krashen believes that a similar type of speech, which contains comprehensible input, not grammar structures and rules, is what teachers should use to promote second language acquisition in the classroom. In observing how children and adults learn a second language, Krashen notes a similar use of modified input similar to caretaker speech with second language learners. Native speakers and English teachers, for example, modify or roughly tune their speech so that non-native speakers and language students can understand them. Even language students themselves modify their speech in the classroom so that other learners can understand them. These modifications are done for the purpose of communication, not to teach speech or to teach grammar structures. Krashen also notes that children learning a second language naturally go through what he calls a silent period of several months before they begin to produce in the new language. This silent period is similar to the silent period that humans experience as babies and toddlers while acquiring their native language. 
Crash and feels this silent period should be respected in the language classroom, and students should be exposed to considerable comprehensible input rather than being forced to speak before they're ready. Being forced to speak before they are ready forces students to resort to using structures from their native language. This results in errors, many of them very hard to correct, and hinders any real acquisition in the new language. Finally, Crash Insights research into existing second language teaching methods to support his input hypothesis. He makes the observation that newer methods that utilize comprehensible input, in other words, where the focus is on comprehension and not form, such as the total physical response method and the natural approach, are reported in some cases to be more successful than traditional methods that focus primarily on grammatical structures. I hope this presentation has been clear and informative. For more information, I invite you to check out the following resources. Thank you for your attention.